No doubt you've been hearing a lot lately about what Jesus has done for you. Forgiveness, life, and salvation have your name written all over them. Everything that needed to be done has been done for you. Being born without original sin? Check. Living a perfect life without ever sinning at all in any way? Check. Taking all your sins upon himself and paying the punishment for them? Check and check. Jesus has not just done it all. He's done it all for you. It's a pretty sweet deal. Maybe even too good to be true. Is part of you waiting to hear the catch? There's always someone who says, yeah, it's for you, but you need to do something to make it yours. You need to accept the gift and invite Jesus into your heart. Basically, you still need to do something to make what Jesus did complete and true for you. That sort of thinking will inevitably leave you lying in bed one night staring at the ceiling. There you spend hours replaying in your mind all the terrible things of your life, the things you've done, the things you didn't do, the things you should have done. And then there are the temptations that you've entertained in your mind. You've planned them out and maybe even done them, knowing full well that they were wrong. Maybe that's because you didn't mean it when you accepted him into your heart. Because you really should be doing way better than this by now. You better work on getting yourself right with God again. And actually mean it this time. But wait, did you see what happened there? We started with everything being done by Jesus for you. And we ended up with all the things that you need to do to save yourself. The thing is, Jesus was born, lived, died, and rose for you to save you. In baptism, you have been raised to new life in Christ, covered in, by his holiness. As far as God is concerned, you are right now as perfect and sinless as Jesus himself is. And since Jesus did it all for you, there's nothing left for you to do. That's because you're not actually an active participant in this deal. You're the object of it all. You are what Jesus saves. He's forgiven all your sins by his death on the cross. He's raised you to eternal life in baptism. What you do is soak it all in. And then you go about your life as though it's all true and means something. Because it is. And it does. Now, receiving is a lot harder to do than it sounds. The devil, the world, and your sinful flesh will tell you that you have to do something. And you need to ignore them all. Don't let them make you doubt what your Savior has said and done for you. Don't believe them when they say you can and must add to what Jesus has done for you or you're not actually saved. Receiving what Christ has done for you means doing just that. Receive it in word and sacrament as frequently and regularly as you can. Because you believe what he says, you put yourself where you will receive even more of his gifts. In church, his word fills your ears and the supper, his body and blood are put into your mouth for the forgiveness of all your sins, again and again. Still looking for the catch? I don't have to do anything. I can just go out, mess around, and kill people, and that's okay? Really? No. You believe and trust what he did for you matters, so you live your life accordingly. Why would you want to go out and use that gift to purposely sin? That's not how believing works. Repent of that kind of thinking. In Jesus, you live as one who is free from condemnation. You are free from worry that God's going to zot you at every turn. Free from holding grudges. Free to forgive others when they sin against you. Free to put others before yourself. You are even free to keep the commandments. God has done so much for you in Christ. You can love and serve others just as freely and slothfully as he has for you. Martin Luther compared our receiving the gifts of the gospel to the way dry earth soaks up rain. The dry earth can't produce rain or cause it to rain when it needs it. That has to come from way up high in the clouds, from outside the earth. And the dry ground absorbs it. And that causes new life to flourish. Sometimes there's so much rain that the ground can't absorb it all and it overflows in a muddy gospeling mess everywhere. So there's another gift for you. You get to bask in Jesus and receive all that he's done for you. Soak that up and live in it. Thanks for watching us talk at you. If you want to see us talk at you some more, subscribe to see notifications when we talk at you the next time. Donate to support Higher Things at higherthings.org slash giving. Help us to help you. And if you like this video, check out our website at higherthings.org and check out more content from Higher Things.